Welcome crew to week three of Family Matters, a series that we've been doing for the past two weeks. And I'm so glad that you're here and watching. I just want you guys to do one thing for me before we even get into the word. Um, can you please just tell me how you're doing? I need some activity down below. Like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you doing during this whole COVID-19? I need to know, please. So we're gonna um, get this news out there for you guys. We are doing the Fun Factory on Halloween and it is at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Tell your friends, tell the people that you know, go out there, we're gonna be there and we're gonna be excited to see you guys there. So we're gonna go ahead and pray in and then we're gonna go right into the word. Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be here today, oh God, allowing us to visually, to hear you, to feel you, to see you, oh God, during our week, oh Father God. We just ask you right now, Father God, that this word, oh Father God, not only touches those who watch it and those who are listening, oh God, but allow them to change their lives, oh Father God. Allow them to unite with their family. Allow them to understand that change is a necessity, oh Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, for your move over their lives, oh Father God. Keep them, oh Father God. When they're weak, oh Father God, keep them, oh Father God. When they're strong, oh Father God, keep them, oh Father God. Lead our children into the right direction, oh Father God. Allow no weapon to be formed against them to prosper, oh Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, that they walk in glory, oh Father God. They step in glory, oh Father God, that they can call on you, oh Father God. They can shout your name, oh Father God, whether it be Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, oh Father God. You are with us, oh Father God. So we thank you right now, Father God, for this moment, oh Father Father God. I just ask you right now, Father God, allow me to decrease so that you can increase through me, oh Father God, as I share this word with them, oh Father God. I thank you and I adore you and I love you, oh Father God. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. So today we're talking about family. I know we've been talking about it for the past two weeks, but family is so crucial. Family is crucial. And one thing that I want to kind of highlight with the, the, the moment of family is change. We all go through change, right? Like, for example, for me, when I was in high school, my senior year, I was motivated. I wanted to be an oral surgeon. That was my whole goal in life, to be an oral surgeon. But life had something else for me. I took my first class as an anatomy student. I was like, yes, I'm about to be an oral surgeon. First test failed. But my whole idea of wanting to be an oral surgeon was at the, the worst part. The heart wasn't right. I wanted to be an oral surgeon because my dad used to flick me just to learn how to tie my shoes. And I said, you know what? When I grow up, I'm going to knock all your teeth out. Like that was my whole motive. So I grew up with hate in my heart. But God told me, hey, this is not for you. I want you to teach. I want you to be a college professor. I want you to share your wisdom on the things that you've learned. So, so that's a change right there. But some of us, we've had experiences of change in regards to friendship. People that you grew up with and you, you expected to be there with you through life has changed up. The, 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 the fact that you now growing into listening to different music. When you were three years old, you were probably listening to the Wiggles. Some of y'all probably too young for that, but the Wiggles was classic. But now you, you, you listen to Travis Green, you, you listen to these other music that you, you didn't used to listen to back then. But now that you've changed and your appetite for music has changed as well. And these are the things that I want you guys to kind of hold on to because these are changes that we can kind of understand because we're growing through it. But there are some changes that are unexpected. Unexpected are like your group of friends, your clique in high school or in middle school change because you are in a different setting, like you're in a different city. How, how do you manage that change when you're not familiar with the people that you used to hang around with? Now you have to build new friendships, build new groups of friends, build a new career in regards to the set of um, school activities that you used to do in the old school. Now that you're doing a new school, you, you're kind of unfamiliar with it. And it can, it can be scary. These are changes that can be scary, but there's other kinds of examples of dealing with change that are unexpected. Family that are being sick that they, their bodies are weak and you, you don't understand they were once healthy, now they're, they're, their bodies are deteriorating. Yeah, and then there, there's other changes such as financial changes. Maybe your, your family was at that middle class range or, or they're at the upper echelons of wealthy and now they're dealing with financial issues and now they're in that lower class. They gotta move and downsize and get to a smaller setting and live into a house, to an apartment. These are unexpected, you would think that, uh, They'd always be in that, that position, but now that life has hit them in a way that you didn't really expect to happen. But we're gonna talk about these 
expectations that we have when it comes to change. And, and, and one thing that we've kind of put in a pedestal is our family. Our family, we have this belief that it's a constant. It will never change. Like our family, they're, they're the people that we go to for trust. That, that our family are the people that we go to to, to, to listen out to, put our, our hearts out to. But for some reason, when family change, everything change. And what I mean by that is when your family's going through something, your whole idea of what to expect is unexpected. And let me give you some examples. Divorce, right? When your family's going through a divorce, come on, you thought your parents were gonna be there forever. Like they were never gonna separate, but now that they're dealing with this whole dynamic of you're going to this house one week and then you're going to the next house the other week. So that balance of change is disrupted. You don't really kind of familiarize yourself with that kind of change because you never had it planned. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and write this on my goal that my family's gonna separate. No, you didn't write that down. And then another example is a newborn. Maybe you were just the only child in your family, right? But now your, your parents got this newborn and you're, you're now a, a, a older brother or older sister. You're not getting the attention that you used to have. That's unexpected. And then one of my one that I kind of it, it hits home is losing someone in your family. Maybe you've lost a, a parent or a sibling. For me, it was a sibling. I didn't write down, hey, I'm going to lose my sister at 16. I didn't expect that. And these are the things that life kind of throws at us. But one thing I want you guys to kind of get into the meat of this lesson is to understand that God is with us through our ups and downs. God is with us through our change. Like he, he doesn't, he's not absence in change. He's there, he's present. So I want you guys to understand this King Solomon. Wow. King Solomon is one of the wisest people in the book. They talk about him, they, they reverence him. That's why he was a king. And in his life, he, he, he mentions this in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one through eight. I'm gonna say it again to, for you guys to get there. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one through eight. It says here, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to reverence the embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What a word. What a word. So what we're seeing here and what King Solomon is saying is change is inevitable. Change is coming. Change is coming. There's no way of hiding from change. It says it says it in the word that change is going to happen. And you got to be the person that understands that it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But I know you're asking, how do I navigate, Fonzo? How do I go through this? How can I survive the downside of change? And I'm going to talk about it because God talks about it. God says here in Isaiah chapter 43, verse two. Yes, yes. Isaiah chapter 43, verse two. It says here, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It says, I will be with you. It doesn't say Joseph. It says, I will be with you. This is Jesus talking right here. And you will pass through the rivers. They will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. So God is saying, in this text right here, that he does not change. He's not gonna change, oh, I'm not gonna help you today. Today's not my time. He's always gonna be with you when you're in your lowest moment and at your highest time. He is always gonna be that constant presence in your life. So we gotta understand that God is always gonna be with us. But the thing about it is when family change, the thing that we can control is our mindset. The way that we look at things the way that we plan things out, the way that we speak, our attitude, our perspective. Once we get a control over that, then everything around us begins to change. And I wanna keep you guys with three things right now before we end this. The first thing, understand that change will happen. Change is inevitable. That's the first thing I want you guys to get into. The second thing is, 
Know that God is with you. Yes. I think that's probably should have been first, but God is still with you. Even if it was first, third, second, God is always with you. Emmanuel, God is with you. That's, that's what it means. God is with you. And then the last thing I want to keep you guys with, trust that God can use you and use the change in you. He can use the change that's in you to develop you to be a better and wiser person. And that's all for week three. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Peace and love.